Hey guys, World Leader here. We're going to be doing a little different of a video today. We're going to be going over tier 2 camping and the basics of it and what you can benefit from it. So, um, to start off with, I want to give a nice shout out to my homie, Saku. Let me see if I get them in ranks. Yeah, Saku, you can see them here, first place PvP. They gave me a little bit of information. They didn't want to share all their secrets, but who would? Thank you so much, Saku. Huge shout out. Thank you so much. Now, let's go ahead and get started with this. Pretty much, why would you want to camp in Tier 2? Tier 2, oh my god, the most boring part of the game. It's the beginning. Well, you're far from knowing the actual truth if that's what you think. Tier 2 is probably one of the most competitive tiers in the game because everyone can max out super easy. So, it's like going against the best of the best almost all the time. If you're not on your toes and you don't know what you're doing, you're going to get wrecked in PvP and you're not going to be able to beat anyone in 1v1 duels. So the whole reason you want to camp here is because if you come here to PvP and you check out rewards, you'll see here that the main item is gems, gold, and epic material. Those three things alone are awesome for starters. First place gets 2k gems, that's awesome, but it doesn't even drop that much. It's only dropping by 200. I haven't been playing this account this week because I was for, uh, pushing for Nub Eater and for my other account, but I'm still in the top 251 to 500 and I'm getting 600 gems for literally doing nothing. And that's awesome. If I just maybe popped even one pack, I just popped one pack, I can probably get up to like 50 if I'm lucky. I just have to play my cards right and that'll get me to a thousand gems. These people mostly don't pop packs. If they pop packs, it's because they're going to get more gems to replace them with. So what do I recommend? Something that was taught to me from a few people in tier two, mainly Saku, is to do all your tickets on one. Believe it or not, you will be missing about 40-ish to 100 and some experience just doing five ticket runs is it faster yes but if you win all the one tickets you actually get more experience points in the end placing you higher and believe it or not these little bit of points they matter down here they really do so running on one ticket is always the most efficient always and if i were you people to avoid i would avoid anyone with a guild tag if possible in um in pvp if you're just starting off let's say you don't have any of the meta fams right now um in tier two then you really want to be careful with people with guild tags because those are people that have passed tier two only very very few people have guild tags that are in tier two because you're not able to access a guild until tier three i believe the only reason they have them in tier two is because of some glitch that happened way back in the day so just keep that in mind Another thing is with Gauntlet, you also want to do one token runs because you also have the same experience problem in Gauntlet as you do with PvP. You can climb easier with tokens and the higher you go, the more you place. You're pretty much going to want to climb as much as you can until you can't anymore and then farm the easier one at the top endlessly over and over and over again so you can benefit from the most points possible. If I go ahead and go to ranks, you'll see here that I'm pretty much uh, 216, which is crazy because I'm not really trying at all. Um, if you go over here, you'll see that I'll be getting 800 gems from here. So just from those two events alone, I'm going to be getting 1400 gems this week. Now, that's awesome. I'm just getting stuff like gems for free and I get these free rolls just for, just by playing the game. So that's the cool thing about all this. You could still buy pretty much everything in the shop. Like everything here is still buyable. You can just stockpile it until you're able to use it like these shard baskets. If you wanted, let's say you get your pet and accessory, right? You could stay here as long as you want. Save gems. Buy all these on sale, mind you, shard baskets. You can always wait for a sale like Congiversary or something like that. You can buy as many shard baskets, as many plaque of badges, as many token duffels anything you want you can buy everything and anything and just stock it up stock it up stock it up stock it up if i can show you my inventory real quick you'll see here that i have some stuff already stocked up some from events some that i've bought with gems which i don't recommend buying any of this stuff from gems if you still have epic or less i think you need legendaries all the way through before even spending on anything else the only other thing I would recommend besides pet accessory is probably brain augments for your familiars, which is what I did for pengs, and I don't regret it. So 
yeah, I, I'm already saving some stuff here. I'm buying common boosts when they're on sale in packs of 50. That way I can have some later on. Um, but you don't have to do that. Most people don't do it. I don't even recommend buying speed kicks, but I run them. I, they're not beneficial, but I run like eight accounts. So the faster I finish an account, the better. But anyways, um, yeah, that's pretty much going to be the reasons on why you would want to camp tier two is all the gems all the build up you're able to do, everything you're able to save for, it's just so much more efficient. I threw a little bit of tips in there. I'm not really gonna touch any more on PVP and Gauntlet, maybe PVP a little bit, only for the familiar aspect of things, but let me go ahead and tell you a little bit of things that you would want to do if you do consider camping in tier two. So one, first things first, you're gonna finish all of Bit Valley, of course, to get tier two. Do not go past this second dungeon. You can do these three flags, but if you accidentally do this third one and you complete it, which is super easy, you're going to go to tier three and there's no way of coming back at all. You would have to start a whole new account and tier three does not have the same benefits as tier two. They're slightly different and they're not as good for the gem saving. So just only do these two dungeons in Winter Marsh. Don't even touch the flags if you can help it use them as security for not going through you're not missing out on anything from this honestly you're fine so you're going to pretty much want to farm grim's crossing a lot and you're going to want to farm yeti's tundra a lot and those are going to be your main two places of farming is that the only thing you guys have to do of course not you know of course not i would recommend getting your borland shrimps out of the way so you have something to start with the basics you know what i mean you could even finish this middle dungeon pretty easy um very very easy um i would recommend getting three stars on everything except the last dungeon again do not do not come over here and once you're done with that uh once you're done with your borland shrimps you could work on your meta fams the meta fams are pretty much going to be the fams that are the best in slot to use in this tier and right now for starting meta you're going to want to use pangs pangs is honestly super easy to make they're very useful for making another familiar in the future penguita so it's pretty good to farm this right now while you're here anyways so if we view pangs they come with 22.5 speed 22.5 speed that doesn't sound like a lot but if you see that their main points are into speed already as it is you'll notice that they're very very fast compared to any other familiar in this area right now but like, period they're super fast and um pretty much i'm pairing as much in power as i can to get them that little bit more power in there you know they're a little weak um but with that empower chance it kind of makes a difference and the what i was lucky enough to roll <laughs> was this 45% chance to attack enemy team per turn, which is great since their skills don't have any multi-hits per turn is, is pretty good. Unless I get dual strike on here, then yeah, of course I'm missing out, but I'm not. So I have a pretty solid setup right now. Pangs is one of the best um, DPS familiars in tier two. I believe the only other um, familiar that can beat Pangs in tier two is going to be Robbie, which is right here. Robbie does take sprockets though, so it is a little harder of a farm. You have to get gobbies, you have to get sprockets. If you want, you can always save up gems and always bribe gobbies until you get the six or seven or eight that you want, depending on the size of the team you want of Robbies. And then once you're done with that, you can continue the rest if you want to do that. However you want to do it, you can do it. I recommend bribing in this for Robbie or Gobby only. I don't recommend bribing for anyone else. If you're camping, you're going to be there for a long, long time. <clears throat> After that, I would say for a tank familiar, the best familiar in class from what I've learned so far is going to be Yobo. Yobo, again, also takes sprockets, which is unfortunate, but Yobo has 15% more block chance than Shramps does. Go ahead, take a look at Yobo. You see here, I have really, really terrible pumps on Yobo because I haven't been lucky enough to roll anything. Um, there's no stacking since they have no um, stable familiars of Yobo in the stable, but base 45% chance, that's almost half the time he's getting hit, he's blocking, you know, so that's pretty good. If we go to the skills there's not much sustain which is unfortunate but it's fine um there's a lot of closest 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 so you know what you're hitting you're you're nuking out the front with this guy and if you do get giga chomp on board which is kind of hard to get because it's i think it's 3sp 
you can help target something out and it does a pretty beefy amount of damage the most damage out of anything else in his kit so that's pretty cool with yobo um yobo is a very solid familiar and you can take them into the future of the game they'll be very very useful down the board i'd say you probably have to get rid of them around tier 12 ish if you want it to be the most efficient with things but yobo can take you pretty pretty far um but yeah that's going to be pretty much the entry meta for tier 2 and that's what you're going to want to be aiming for if you do plan on staying here i would say if you're going to go dps start off with shramps if you're going to go tank still start off with shramps because at the beginning of the game unless you get lucky and get some awesome <laughs> defensive accessory that gives you a lot of one stat that can help you out something that's very reliable like i'd say neutrino or anything else that gives you a lot like trophy anything like that damage reduction block something that's very reliable you really cannot tank for anything unless you get something very solid like i have this 18 percent block chance three percent absorb you think about it that makes me a worse tank than shrimps like right off the bat i'm like way worse than shrimps shrimps does 30 block base so this is not good <laughs> but i do have a better main hand with some sustain you know but that's the thing it just really depends always go for shrimps first in my opinion then you can focus pengs or borland you don't even have to get borland if you don't want you can just be a dps for a while if you want to go to tank it does not matter just put a lot more points and damage i think all your points should be in damage anyways i don't think you can take any uh, benefits from speed unless you have like a attack team pet or something like that so it just really depends I say shrimps, pangs, yobo, and that's what I would do. And that's pretty much going to be the entry for tier two. I'm sorry it's all over the place. I'm still trying to learn a template for these videos. If there's anything you guys uh, want me to recommend that are tier two campers, I can go ahead and do that as well. If there's anything I messed up on, please correct me in the comments. If there's any tips you guys want to leave at all, leave them down there as well. Please, please, please. I would love to learn from this and teach others. I want more people to tier camp because I know tier camping is the way to progress in the game the most efficiently. Do you have to tier camp in tier two? Of course not. You can camp in any tier, but just make sure you know the benefits of every tier. Right now, I'm still learning. I know right now that tier two is the best for gems, which is why I'm here right now. So I can go ahead and get everything I need to progress smoothly. Thank you so much for stopping by. This is World Leader. Have a great one, guys. Peace.